One of the most endearing pictures of Johnny Appleseed is the description of his first entrance into Ohio. Reminiscent of the way he is said to have floated down the Allegheny a few years before, sleeping on a cake of ice, he is now seen on a summer day drifting lazily down the Ohio River. He is resting in the dugout of a hollowed out log, snoozing without a care in the world, evidently trusting in the river to take him wherever it was he wanted to go. While the classic caricature of Johnny Appleseed pictures him as a man in ragged clothes with a cooking pot sitting sideways on his head, it is not certain whether he ever actually did this. If he did, it's most likely that he put the pot on his head in a cockeyed manner to amuse children, not to free up space while traveling. The ragged clothing, however, was indeed an aspect of his outward appearance. Johnny may not have been well dressed, even by frontier standards. His trousers were short and frazzled at the bottom with briars and burrs, and were supported in some half-hearted fashion by some original substitute for suspenders. He spent no time shopping for new clothes. His clothing was mostly old, given to him in exchange for apple trees. In his later years, he sported a coffee sack in which he cut holes for his head and arms to pass through. He said that it was a very serviceable cloak and as good clothing as any man need wear. Moreover, it was not unusual for people to cut a hole in a blanket, pull it over one's head, and use it as a coat. Nor was it unusual for people to go shoeless in those days. While stories abound about Johnny's rejection of shoes even in the midst of winter as a matter of conscience, these are surely exaggerations. It is true that generally, even in the coldest weather, he went barefooted. But it should also be noted that sometimes, for his long journeys, he would make himself a rude pair of sandals. You, Johnny, are always welcome. Among the most popular Johnny stories, far more endearing than the portrayals of him as a ragged, barefooted, and pot-headed vagabond, are the stories that reveal the native goodness of his heart. While many of the stories are exaggerated and some are improbable, there is a core of truth within them that tells us a great deal about Johnny Appleseed. For example, Johnny enjoyed carrying presents with him when he came to visit. In his pack, Johnny would sometimes carry a present of tea for some housewife who needed a bit of cheer. Similarly, he would carry a piece of bright calico or a gay ribbon for a child who had saved seeds for him during the winter. His arrival was always an occasion for joy. He could tell the most engaging stories. He could whistle and sing the gayest tunes. He could care for a childish hurt in the tenderest way.